Hello, I'm Artifacts Mars, and this is a mad science update. Uh, Dr. Stephen Hawking is banking, and some rich people are banking something called Operation Starshot. The idea here is to send nanoprobes, microscopic probes, to another planet. Uh, they would use ground-based lasers, apparently, to propel these things. And they would be on their way to Alpha Centauri or wherever. When viewed on a cosmic scale, humanity lives on a tiny grain of sand floating in an unimaginably deep ocean. Huge expanses of space separate even the close to stars, ensuring that should any sufficiently intelligent life form want to spread across the galaxy, it would take a monumentous effort to launch across the interstellar seas. Yeah, with our primitive, primitive te technology, that's true, but we already have people talking about warp drive, like in Star Trek. As we look toward the stars, hoping we may visit them someday, many would argue that interstellar travel is impossible. After all, the nearest known star system is only four light years away. Let's think about that for a moment. It takes light eight minutes and 20 seconds to travel from the sun's surface to our planet's atmosphere. So when you look up at the sun, solar heat you feel on your face, travel 90 million miles from interplanetary space, and arrive on your skin less than nine minutes later. Would it take light to travel from our sun to Alpha Centauri, the nearest star system beyond our system, solar system, nearly four and a half years, uh, to cover the 26 trillion miles in their stellar space? Now we have an idea of scale for some of the spacecraft to Alpha Centauri using the propulsion methods currently available to us. It would take nearly 80,000 years to complete trip. It's a little wonder we see ourselves quarantined by cosmic cooling. Now, that's mostly bullshit. Uh, I actually believe they have propulsion systems. I've done enough reading and listening to conclude this. So when the break, breakthrough star shot announcement was made on Tuesday and the 55th anniversary of Yuri Gagarin's Heroic launch in space, world suddenly became aware there's a group of engineers, scientists, and futurists, and entrepreneurs. See a future where humanity will make monumentous step in the unknown, possibly sending a fleet of tiny robotic explorers to that impossible destination, Alpha Centauri. In other words, these things would be the size of, not even the size of dust. They would be microscopic. Uh, what good are they? Even if you could create something like that, what good are they? Or are they going to come back to us like the Borg and say, Hello, from this point on you'll exist to serve us us. After they've uh, built each other and ma manufactured each other for a few hundred years. You will exist to service us. Big names like Mark Zuckerberg are on board of directors and former director of NASA's Ames Research Center. Pete Warden will lead the project. Uh, this is not the first project considering interstellar travel. Project Analyst was this monstrous thing. A monstrous unmanned interstellar vehicle as big as Empire State Building. Most of the daily's bulk came from the sheer amount of fuel that would be required to accelerate the vehicle and slow it down once it reached destination. Without the, when exploring space, Daylis sent a powerful message, go big or don't go think about going. In this case, the starship would be propelled by a chain of nuclear explosions via a method conceived in the Cold War known as nuclear pulse propulsion. 
This concept assumed a lot, chiefly that there would be disruptive technologies and huge advances in materials research in the future that would allow such a vehicle to be constructed. Currently, an international group of scientists and engineers have picked up where Daedalus left off, reimagining this effort as part of the non profit group Icarus Interstellar began this project I Icarus, or the son of Daedalus. Icarus now has several projects in the same aim in mind to propel humanity to stars and find solutions to technological and social economic barriers along the way. <coughs> well, I'm going to break this down for you. This is bullshit, basically. Uh... We could have, I think we probably could go as far as we wanted to, but on one hand they're talking about sending some behemoth there using nuclear bombs, the Alpha Centauri not even knowing what they're going to find, and on the other side they're talking about sending micro machines that are so small you almost need an electron microscope to see them. I think this is all just uh, make money, crony capitalism, that type of thing. I don't think there's anything to this. But I do think that we probably do have technologies available to send us to the stars if we want. I don't know. These people, there's something else. Oh, I'd love to see it. I'm not denying that, but. You know, just think about this. Even if you manage to land a bunch of tiny nanobots on the surface of a planet, how are they going to photograph things? How are they going to send information back here? What good are they if they don't? They're not any good. That's just the point. Now, that's our mad science update. I learned about this while researching something else. I'm Artifacts Mars. Thanks for watching.